We're standing up a little straighter around Michelle Yeoh. When the camera rolls, it feels to me like old Hollywood. It's like mm. the person who can just look toward the camera and light up the frame. The fighting in the, the actual pages of graphic novel is uh, doesn't do justice to what Daniel here was able to do with his. It's better. It's, <laughs> it's better in a, in a little square of drawings. Um, so I'm really excited for them to see uh, what Daniel, along with our stunt coordinator Punk from China, from Marvel Films, together they've they've elevated the whole the whole uh, kung fu set piece. That's the one place where I think we do excel possibly past the graphic novel. Yeah, I'm su super excited about it. I saw some clips recently and like the combination of all the crazy uh, Hong Kong style wow work that we're doing plus the American CGs that we're doing really kind of make it work and kind of do justice to the graphic novel action. I think that was one of the biggest questions I had was like, how are we gonna do that? How are we gonna translate this to the screen and make it look really good? And I think we achieved that um, in the clips that I've seen. You know, like Kelvin said, there's certain scenes that are sort of elevated from the graphic novel. And then there's also certain scenes that are like straight from the graphic novel. One of them is, is sort of the scene where um, my character Jin and, and, and Jimmy's character, uh, Wei Chen, are sort of meeting for the first time and they're talking about this robot. And um, I know Gene, the writer of the graphic novel, has talked about it a lot of times how that was such a great scene for him because it, it literally is straight out of the panels. So do you have a lab partner yet? Is there a Jim Wang here? Wang. This is Wayne Chang. Wei Chen. He's a new student and he's Chinese, like you. He's gonna tag along to all of your classes. About seats for us. Come on. Except in math. He's way ahead of you in math. Luckily, there's a lot of really great young burgeoning talent, Asian American talent, Chinese American talent. Um, so we made sure that no stone was unturned. And yet at the same time, with all due respect to all those young actors, when Ben came into the Zoom window, uh, it was essentially over. We, you know, when you find it, you find it. I also knew that the show wasn't gonna be possible if we didn't have our Jin Wong. The same goes for Amelia's character, you know, because I think the gutter ball Casting choice is just to hire a standard, you know, everyday pretty white girl and just put her there and let the show um, sort of play out in that way where this Chinese American kid falls in love with the pretty white girl and that's it. Uh, but we wanted so much more and we found so much more in Sydney. And when they started acting together, we, we knew that we were sort of in business. And the, the triangle of them with Jimmy really is the heart. <laughs> the triangle of chaos. The triangle of chaos. We're that's the heart of the show. <laughs> Within the book, that was a lot of the appeal was the push and pull of those two characters. And I think you two brought that together really, really well. And it was so much fun to watch. And then so for, for me to be on the sidelines, but talked about a lot, um, was really fun. I think their their friendship is what genuinely makes the show and, and the give and take of that was just amazing to watch and to be a part of. If it wasn't for their chemistry, this whole thing wouldn't work. They are really, truly the heart of the show and they did an amazing job for young, fresh actors, so it was, a, it was great, and it was great to work with them. I like the metaphor that it, this show is about a kid who's trying to grow up as an American in America, but it's just, he feels like there's extra stuff he has to deal with on top of that, right? And that extra stuff comes from his cultural background, his parents, and it's like all this stuff that he feels like other people doesn't have to deal with, and that's, I think, paired so wonderfully with the mythological elements because that's a great metaphor. Yes, he has to deal with the extra stuff of like, oh, his mom wants to, you know, buy a squid or something. And he's like, what's that all about? And but also here comes Guan Yin crashing in from the ceiling. And what's that all about? So it's this sort of perfect metaphor in my mind. I, th I think it is a feeling of feeling that your extraordinary parts of your life are a problem rather than your superpower. And it's the journey of a young man's understanding that that's what gives him uniqueness. That's what's going to give him you know, that's the fossil fuel of his life as he gets older and grows up. But when you're at that age, I mean, 15, you know, sucks for everybody. <laughs> Except so, for Jimmy. Um, so <laughs> we're, we're, Jimmy. We, we asked Jimmy once, was like, were you an awkward, like, 15 year old? He goes, no. Yeah. I, have no I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what's cool also is that, like, you know, we're bringing out things that as Asian Americans, we felt awkward about growing up and maybe even, you know, scared to show our white friends or our Western friends. But in this show also, we get to showcase the really cool parts of our culture, like the Monkey King, uh, Goddess of Mercy, the food, or like all these different things get showcased and then we get to flex it and be proud of it and kind of get rid of that awkward scariness that we had as a teenager of showing that to everybody and just really just rolling it out and let everyone enjoy it. I need your help with my quest to stop the uprising. 
gate between Earth and Heaven is opening. Okay! You must stop it or everyone will perish. The fate of your world hangs in the balance. I don't really see how I fit into this whole thing. You're my guide. Can we come up with something a little bit cooler than guide? Servant? Yeah, no, you're right, guide's better. I think Monkey King was my hero from like three years old onwards. Um, and I think every Asian kid, Asian American kid, be whether Chinese or not, knows the legend of the Monkey King and Journey to the West, that story. It's legendary in our culture, in, in the Asian culture, not just Chinese culture. And um, there's been so many like animations, uh, cartoons, uh, TV shows, movies. Uh, many actors have played Monkey King. But what was special about this one is that we do see glimpses of his past and his history, but we're seeing a different Monkey King. He's not the kid anymore. He's an adult. He's got a son, and his son is kind of running amok and is kind of similar to the way he was when he was younger. And he's in this conundrum of like, do I chastise him for being like me or do I let him be and let him discover what I had to discover, right? So, cause the Monkey King originally is a young rebellious character who learns on his own journey, journey to the West, that he has to change his ways, right? And he becomes enlightened. It's a story of enlightenment, a metaphor for enlightenment. And so we're seeing him at this stage in his life where he's more mature, more responsibilities in life and he's stressed out. And then he's got to deal with his kid, uh, played by Jimmy, who's just like totally running amok and he's got to go and grab this guy and, and fix things. Otherwise, he could cause some problems in heaven as well. So it's a totally different take on the Monkey King and that's why I was so interested in playing it. The original story of the Monkey King isn't very permeated in sort of Western culture, but everybody here sort of knows him, you know, especially if you're a kid because people watch Dragon Ball, you know, and people watch Naruto and people watch... The, this, this story is so legendary and so prolific in Asia that it seeps into every piece of media that comes out of there and, and you know, comes here. And so it's not entirely foreign, but I think for someone like Jin, that's all he knows is this sort of peripheral version of the, the, the character. And so he has to sort of do his own research to find out more about it. It will be difficult and dangerous. What are you thinking, girl? What if I'm not, though? Fate is not decided up there, but down here. I'm excited for the fans to see Ki Kwan's character. It's actually not from the graphic novel, but it's a twist on a major character from the graphic novel. So I think that we did something really special with that character, and I think Ki's performance is incredible. We're standing up a little straighter around Michelle Yeoh, and she shows up. Michelle's career was rough and tumble, throw the camera on your shoulder, and let's figure this out for many, many years. And so she still carries that kind of roll your sleeves up and get this mm -hmm. done um, kind of attitude. And so when you have a matriarch like that at the top of your call sheet, who's that cool, that laid back, that funny, that down to, to get the shot, it sort of like, you know, trickles down to the whole set. So she really sets the tone for how everybody's gonna behave. And she, she really does wanna create a family around us. When the camera rolls, it feels to me like old Hollywood. It's like mm. the person who can just look toward the camera and light up the frame and just, you know, Greta Garbo level, Catherine Hepburn level kind of give good face acting where it's like you feel like a goddess is on screen. And um, so I can't be more grateful to have had her be part of the, our world and, and also to watch the world over the course of this last year finally start to give her, you know, her flowers. Yeah, so um, it's been really gratifying to watch that.